It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brain of Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Charleston Southern head cheerleading coach, Coach Teresa Griffith. How are you doing today? I'm well. How are you doing today, Brandon? Doing good. Can you talk about how you knew that you wanted to become a college coach for cheerleading? So I actually stumbled upon uh, this job. I know, I've been cheering since I was in fifth grade. Uh, I cheered all throughout high school and and then I cheered in college, and it just, I, after college, I started coaching high school teams, middle school teams, a few all-star teams here and there, um, and then the opportunity at CSU came around, and I just could not turn it down. It's what I've been looking for all of my life. Of course, what was it like going to Shorter University to become a cheerleader? So I found uh, out about Shorter through a old high school cheerleading coach um, who, yeah, was my cheerleading coach, and she knew I was, like, looking for a program that I wanted to be a part of that was also not so close to home. So I'm from Bowden, Georgia, um, and they're near University of West Georgia. Um, and I wanted something a little bit further away from the small town. So I went only an hour and 15 minutes north to Rome, Georgia, and found a shorter university. It's a small Christian school, very similar to Charleston Southern. Um, I majored in I majored in biology. I have a Spanish minor. But really, I was there for cheer. Um, we won four national championships with the program. It was the first year that the pro when my freshman year was the first year that the program had started competing. Um, so I was a part of a foundational team, and every single year I just watched the program grow and grow and grow. Um, I've made so many lifelong friends through Shorter University. One of them is the Georgia Tech coach Shanna Belden. Um, Shanna's fan now. She's been one of my best friends. My coach, um, Heather Turner, she was for, she cheered with uh, the Team USA and Hawaii Pacific. And then the head coach of the program, Rachel Magnus, I just watched how she navigated those four years and just saw that program explode and thought, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And to say, you know, as a, as a college cheerleader, I have four national championships, like, hey, why not? <laughs> Of course, what was that like cheering in college and obviously, as you said, winning four national championships as a cheerleader? It was the best chapter of my life. Um, just being down in Daytona was amazing. Um, every single year we would get, move in early. We would, you know, learn our game day stuff. And then we would just start bonding with one another and building that trust in order for our stunts to hit. Then once January came around, we would just start hitting the ground and start grinding out our, our choreography for nationals. And I mean, it's hard work and it's, you know, you're not only, you know, a student athlete, you're also majoring for your career. Hopefully, you know, i wanted to be a marine biologist, but that did not pan out. The life did not pan out that way. Um, so nationals and cheerleading was, you know, I had a sisterhood. I had a bond with people um, that just cheered me on from day one, and they're even still cheering me on now. So college cheer was the best, again, the best time of my life, my favorite chapter ever. And it really taught me um, skills to move towards um, career and uh, like career readiness. Just I'm good at keeping a positive vibe. I'm really good at talking to people. And um, without those skills and that grit that I've learned in cheerleading, like I don't think I would be where I am now. Of course, what was it like competing for four national championships during your college time? I, we I had no idea. Once it happened the first year, our first year out there, I was like, okay, wow, this is real. Like, okay, well, let's let's go ahead and see if we can do it again. All right, let's do it again. Okay, let's go for an all-girl three-peat. Um, and we did. And then the next year, we moved divisions to NIIA, and we became more of an advanced team. Um, so we went, we were throwing harder skills my senior year. And man, just having that, that clout behind you of like national championships, national championships, it just brings talent to the program. 
So I started gaining more skills throughout college. Um, and that moment sitting on the mat, holding your teammates' hands, just praying, did we hit it? Did we do, I mean, what do the judges think? Are we first runner ups? That, that anxiety, that rush is, is amazing. And then when they call your name, Shorter University, you just, all that hard work, every, like all the tears, you know, working with a bunch of females, sometimes you start to argue a little bit. So all the arguments, all the tears, all the blood, all the sweat, like it was worth it. And you just build a bond with people that you, you, I know people on the mat will, will work just as hard as I worked. And I think that was the most amazing thing to, to see is that you are not the hardest person working on the mat. There are 19 other per other people doing the same exact thing and when that happens that's when you get magic and that's when you get national championship of course coming out of shorter what was it like going into becoming a high school teacher so that was <laughs> that was i was shorter than everybody i mean i know that's not a pun I, I know i went to shorter but i was i was teaching high school and all my my high school students were like i had to look up to them it was kind of terrifying really um but then i Felt found my groove, fell into teaching, um, and kind of went from a private school to a charter school to public schools. And every single school that I went to, it's just, how can I get into cheerleading? How can I get into cheerleading? Because I just kept getting drawn that way. Um, it's it's a passion that that won't go away. It's something that I I truly do believe I was meant to do. Teaching was that gateway to get me to coach, um, and I. I still teach. I'm still a fifth grade teacher um, right now, as well as coaching college. Um, so there is definitely a love there for the teaching. And then coaching is just, you know, I like science. I teach science, but I love cheerleading and being able to take the things that I learned in the classroom, like the um, just like management skills with the different personalities, um, just work-life balance has really, I think, been able to elevate my coaching skills to be able to to pour into the the children on my team in a different way instead of just coaching. Now I'm also, you know, able to say, hey, let's look at this avenue. Like, how are, like, what are you doing with um, your grades? How about your mental health? Um, how can I check in with you today? Hey, your vibe's a little off. What can I do? So we can make sure that when you're on the mat, you're on the mat and you're bringing your best self for cheerleading. Of course, before you made that jump to the college level, did you coach high school cheerleading? I did. I coached at, and they were just sideline at the time. Um, I was there for three years and I coached there for two years. And then I taught, I coached for one year at, um, and we did their first year as a competitive program. And then after that, I moved into an RV during COVID and I said, I'm out. So I took a little bit of a break. Um, and then while I was on the road, I had the opportunity to come back to Charleston and coach at CSU and it couldn't turn it down. Of course, what was it like making that transition from high school cheerleading to now becoming a college cheerleading coach? I have more time to focus on the skills in, in the high school days and picking up kids after practice and waiting for the kids whenever um, whenever practice is over for the parents to come. I, I enjoyed it. What I really love from a high, not being a high school coach and being a college coach is that my Friday nights are no longer um, Friday night lights, two hour bus rides, or I'm not in a bus filled with girls while they're screaming at the top of their lungs to Taylor Swift. Don't get me wrong. I love Taylor Swift, but it was, it, those are also really great memories, but it's nice to have my Friday nights back um, and just do game days on Saturdays. <laughs> of course, what was that transition like from going from high school coach to a college coach? It was pretty easy. Um, you know, as long as you have a routine and your practices have a routine, like when we get there, we're stretching when, and then we're warming up tumbling and then we're doing jumps and then we're doing stunting and then we're working choreography. Um, it was very seamless to me. I really do did enjoy coaching high school and middle school and the younger girls, but I feel like I am able to go a little bit deeper. Um, and with my girls at CSU and do have one boy, uh, he's amazing. Um, what I really love about coaching college, especially at a Christian school is that we can 
talk about Jesus. And to, to, to me, having that at my own college and then being able to translate that into the college that I'm coaching at now is, is very special and very beautiful. So, hey, if, we're ha- if, if, a, if an athlete is having a problem, we can, hey, let's pause, let's pray. Um, and I could not do that at a, at a high school. I could not do that at a public school. But having the freedom to really, all of us are, you know, have the same mindset when it comes to religion, it, it's, we can grow a little bit deeper and dig a little bit deeper together. How is it like obviously becoming the head coach for Charleston Southern and taking over the program? So I know that the program has had multiple co- co- uh, coaches and in the last few years. And um, I just hope that I'm here. Like, I hope that I die with CSU, like CSU cheer coach. I want to be Monica from cheer where she stayed with Navarro for so long. And you can just see the the way that program has go- grown and it's the number one program in the country. Um, I would, I would love that to be me one day, just having that, um, you know, that love for cheer. It, it's really a dream come true. CSU has just given me the opportunity to, to grow the program. They've been only sidelines for the last few years. Um, so our goal is to make it a competitive team or Daytona. I have 29 girls. Um, I have 29, 28 girls and one boy. Um, and so it's a lot of money to get us down there, but we're doing it and we're making moves or making strides to that. Um, so it's really beautiful to see the passion that my team has to want to elevate themselves, not just be the sideline cheerleaders anymore, but hey, we want to be the standard, which is competitive um, in the nation. So just having the opportunity to even, or Daytona, I don't even know if we're going to get there yet, but we're fingers crossed and we're putting out uh, good vibes and pray, saying a lot of prayers. Um, and I have the support of 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 the families um, and the girls and Terry. It's just really it's an exciting time to be a part of it, a foundational team. And, you know, athletic, our athletic director has seen so much growth within the program over um, since I got here in February. Of course, what does a typical game day look like in the fall versus obviously the winter time? Okay, so for the fall, we have, um, we our parents put on a tailgate for us starting.
you've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.